So today we're going to be looking at an older video I did about capturing the shot and my experience with action cameras. Stick around, this should be interesting. I feel like at my current skill level, I can't really do too much of a deep dive into topics because I don't have enough time to really prepare everything that I want to convey through the video. And so as these videos develop, that is going to be a continuing challenge for me and something that I hope to overcome. But in my last video, we talked about camera settings, setting your ISO, setting your shutter speed, and then dialing in that aperture. One of the extra comments that I would like to make, especially when it comes to ISO and setting that first, is the more daylight you have or, or natural or artificial lighting you have, the lower your ISO number. And then obviously the less lighting that you have, the higher your ISO number. But you wanna find a, a pretty good balance in between because the higher the ISO, the more grainy that your picture is going to look. So it's not always really great to have your ISO maxed out, especially if you can adjust those light levels with your aperture. So as a baseline, like I said, you wanna set your ISO to the scene, taking into account all your natural and artificial lighting. Then you wanna find your shutter speed, which in the last video, the general rule of thumb for a 30 frames per second video, you wanna set it at 1 60th shutter speed. Now, obviously, if there's gonna be a lot of action, you can hike that shutter speed up again, but for the general rule of thumb and for a lot of the videos that I take, I'm at 30 frames per second and I'm shooting at 1 60th shutter speed. The next thing is aperture, and that's gonna physically control how much light you're letting in through the lens. And the lower the number, the more light that it takes in, the higher the number, the less light it takes in. So your low apertures are usually associated with low ISO, and your higher aperture settings are, are generally associated with a more higher ISO. The other thing that I forgot to highlight was that aperture also controls your depth of feel. So the lower number that you have for your aperture setting, the more depth of feel you're going to have. Right now I'm at 3.5 aperture, and so I am uh, in focus and the background is slightly blurry. And I wanna point out that your aperture is also another way that you can help adjust those light levels. So if you're finding that with your ISO settings, the film's too grainy and you're trying to clear up your picture, it's always a good idea to lower your aperture if available. So I'm not trying to beat a dead horse here. I'm just trying to really highlight the importance of learning how to dial your camera in because that comes into play when you're ready to take some action shots. Now, I won't get into it here in this video, but composition is a huge thing, and we can talk about the rule of thirds and the golden ratio in a future video, but those are things to consider when capturing video, and especially if you're trying to capture an action shot. So without further ado, let's dive into this video, and then I'll pause it along the way and offer my commentary. So by now you've been able to capture some pretty cool photos and you're probably looking to step up your game and that's why you've come to this slide. We are going to be talking all about action cameras, but before I do, I thought I would just pause and show you a little bit about what your cell phone is capable of doing. So before we jump into action cameras, let's jump into what our phones can do and uh, see you on the run. So no surprise here, your cell phone is an excellent tool when it comes to capturing video or capturing that action shot that you're looking for. And my general input on your phone being one of your best cameras isn't really gonna change. In fact, as new cameras are developed and as more and more iPhones are made available and newer models come out and they improve the photography software, this is still one of the most powerful tools in your toolbox for an up and coming photographer or videographer. So your cell phone is still a great choice when it comes to action cameras, but if you're looking to capture more than just what your cell phone can do, that's why I made this video. So having a cell phone is awesome because it's usually on you. It's usually always ready to go. And it's right there with easy controls. The other thing is it's got internal memory. So all the videos and pictures that you save Obviously, you're stored right on your phone, and with internet access, you can post these to social media right away with very little fuss. In fact, I can grab screenshots of this right now to use for my Instagram. 
Okay, so maybe you captured some photos with your phone, but you're looking to step up your game and bring something more to the table, and that's why you're going to look into an action camera. This is a pretty cheap camera. Uh, in fact, I have a whole slew of cheap cameras. More about that later. But I think the very first thing to consider is... You know what? My comments are still exactly the same. When it comes to these cheap action cameras, no matter how affordable it may seem, they're always a step behind. This GoPro Hero Session 5 is an older camera that I bought used that outperforms this super cheap action camera that I bought at the same time, and it was brand new. So a used GoPro will outperform some of these cheap knockoffs. It's one of those things that you should probably consider. And with the amount of money that I spent on cheap cameras, I should have just went and bought a GoPro from the start. To think about what you're going to be using the camera for. GoPros, 360 cameras, drones, they're all powerfully awesome tools, but they come at a price tag. So you want to think about how much you're actually going to use these things before you invest in them. There are a few things you can do to help save yourself some money, and here are my tips. First off, look for any kind of sales or deals going on. A lot of action camera brands have different sales throughout the entire year, and it's important to sort of follow along on their social channels to see when some of those things come up for sale. One of the things that I like to do, especially when it comes to GoPro, since they release a new camera almost every year, you can go back and buy the previous year's camera at a discounted rate. Another thing you can do is buy a used camera or a factory refurbished model. I prefer factory refurbished cameras because not only do they come with a factory warranty, but these cameras have been tested so you know that they work. Another thing to think about, and this is where I'm going to talk about the cheapo cameras, is to consider the application that comes with some of the cameras. GoPro and some of the other brand names have their own app that you can use that you can review, capture, and share the photos right from your phone without ever having to transfer files through SD cards. That's also an important thing to know. These cheap knockoff cameras came with like a generic app to download and view the footage. And it was like nearly impossible to get it to work. And in fact, one of the buttons broke on this little cheapo camera. So I, I can't even get into the Wi-Fi settings if I wanted to. And that's the great thing about GoPro. And again, I'm not sponsored by GoPro and I'm, I am a GoPro fanboy, but with GoPro, a lot of the models you can still access via your phone to review your footage. And that speaks volume when it comes to some of these action cameras. If it has a crappy user interface, you're not gonna use it as much as you would a camera that has an app that has a really great interface and is user friendly. These cheaper cameras have less features, but because they're made by a knockoff brand, there's no app to go through and look for the photos. You have to manually plug the SD card into your computer, look through the photos, pick the ones you want, and it's kind of luck of the draw. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're probably saying that's because I'm a fanboy of all the GoPro products, and maybe I am. But I do think there is a time and a place for these more affordable cameras. Like I said, it's kind of luck of the draw. I don't really have any great recommendations, but if you do pick up one of the lower end action cameras, make sure that you do your research and know what you're buying ahead of time. It'll save you a lot of headaches in the long run. Okay, so that pretty much sums it up. First things first, make sure you find something within your price range that's affordable. Look for any kind of way that you can save money and get a great deal on an action camera of your choice. The second thing would be to check out the reviews of the cameras and the reviews for the apps. Make sure it's something that's going to be usable and something friendly to you. And three, along those same lines, just do your homework. Look into the cameras that you're about to buy. And again, make sure it's something that's going to work for you and it's something going to be easy to use. So now that we've gone through the buying process, let's check out some quick tips on how to capture the best action shots. Again, all this stuff applies to the same thing. The other thing that I can't stress enough is trying to utilize the rule of thirds or the golden ratio. Now, I mean, I said I wasn't going to talk about it, but here we are. Might as well go there. The rule of thirds is if you imagine your camera screen is divided up into three equal sections, horizontally and vertically. The goal with this is that you want your subject in one of those thirds. So I am right now centered between two thirds. So I'm right here in the middle. Another perspective would be to be on this side of the screen. On this be sort of dividing line between the thirds. I'm now in a position where I can hold out something and highlight something in this area. Likewise, I can move over into this third of the screen and highlight something over here. 
The other thing is if you're doing a lot of interviews or talking heads, you want that first horizontal line to line up perfectly with your subject's eye line. The first line is also a good line if you're taking any kind of photography of landscapes. You want to match the horizon with either the first or second line dividing the screen. Now there are plenty of tips when it comes to the rule of thirds and those are just kind of the basics. So when I do my video, I have my rule of thirds up on my screen so that way I can see my eye line falls right in line with that top horizontal line. The rest of the stuff in the video is, is pretty spot on. I really don't have too many other corrections to it. One thing that I like to do is put the camera down by my shoes so you can see the tread as I'm running. Early morning or late in the evening, natural lighting can add some really cool effects to your photos without any work on your end. Another thing would be to grab a friend or your running partner, hand them the camera, and just let them have at it. One of the cool things about action cameras is the versatility of the camera. You can use them in almost any setting and can achieve almost any look just by putting it to use. Again, I think it's really important to learn how to set your camera up, especially if you're using a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, knowing your settings, putting it in manual mode, and really forcing yourself to be creative will teach you how to use your camera more and more. Practice makes perfect, so mess around with different settings. See what works and see what doesn't work. Ultimately, the more you play with those manual settings, the better you'll be able to capture video and photographs the way that you want them to appear. It also makes you a more versatile photographer. That way it doesn't matter what the environment is, you know in your head how to make corrections in the camera or to your scene to improve the quality of your pictures. There you have it. Thanks for watching and following along with the daily vlogs. I really appreciate it if you give me a little bit of a like, subscribe, maybe share it on social media. I know I don't offer the most uh, perfect advice, but I feel like I'm offering something. Is that really the way I want to end this? You know, at this point, we got to get a video out, so I just appreciate you watching. Take it easy, guys, and I'll see you on the next one.